Hey y'all, Mr. McKinney here, just going through our lesson on piecewise functions since I'm going to be out of town for this day. So a piecewise function is a function whose domain is divided into several parts. And a different function, rule, or equation is applied to each part. And each part has a rule within a restricted domain. So that's basically just restating that first part. So we're going to have a domain that's broken up. And for each part of the domain, we're going to have a different function rule or a different equation. And it'll hopefully make sense and seem familiar when we start going through it. This was covered in Algebra 2, so this shouldn't be brand new material. All right, so let's take a look at this first piecewise function. And you can tell it's a piecewise function because you'll have f of x equals, and then you'll have two or three or more different lines within the squiggly brace. So let's graph it first, and then we'll be able to answer these questions. So we've got two different functions that we're going to be dealing with. We've got a function for when x is less than 0, and a different function for when x is greater than or equal to 0. So let's start with the less than 0 part. Now, I'm going to think about just y equals negative x first. So the graph of y equals negative x would just be a line going through the origin with a slope of negative 1. But I don't want to have it for the entire domain. I only want to have that blue line for when x is less than 0. So when x is less than 0 is referring to this part. So I'm not going to draw the whole line. I'm only going to be drawing the part that's going to the left from the origin. And now let's pick a different color to do the bottom equation. And the bottom equation will be used for when x is greater than or equal to 0. And the rule is y equals x. So I think about what the graph of y equals x looks like. And then instead of drawing the whole thing, I only want to draw it when x is greater than or equal to 0. All right. Now let's answer the question. So what parent function did this piecewise function form? That V shape is the absolute value parent function. Does this function contain the origin? It does, because when x is equal to 0, I plug in 0, and 0, 0 is a point on this function. And the question is, is it continuous or discontinuous? Because both of these functions meet at the same place, and we've defined what it is for 0, this function is continuous. There's no spot where you would have to pick your pencil up while drawing this function. So this is how you would write the absolute value function as a piecewise function. So if I graph this, or I graph this, I end up graphing the exact same thing, which is this V-shaped graph over here. Now let's get into some more interesting practice. So you guys have three problems right next to each other. I'm going to go through them one slide at a time. And again, I'm going to keep using multiple colors for each one. So let's start with yellow up here for this top one. So the rule is x plus 3. So if I think about a graph of x plus 3, I would have gone up 3, and it's a linear function. But I don't want the whole line. I only want to use this when x is less than or equal to 0. So if we think about the x and y axis, x is 0 right here. And we're looking for when x is less than or equal to 0. So we're going to start up here at 3 and then draw this piece of the function going down to the left with a slope of 1. Now, there's multiple ways to figure out where to graph this. You can do what I just did and think about the graph of x plus 3, or you can just graph x plus 3 on your calculator and then go to the table and look for x values that are less than or equal to 0. You can graph 0, 3, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 1, and so on. Now, when I look at the right side, when x is greater than or equal to 0, Let's switch over to a green color here. If I think about the graph of x squared, y equals x squared would be a parabola, starting at the origin, going up in both directions. But I only want the right half of it. And notice that it's when x is greater than 0, not greater than or equal to 0. So I'm thinking about right here and going to the right. 
I don't actually want to color in the circle at zero, though. There will be an open circle at zero, zero, because I don't actually include zero. Zero is part of the top rule. But after that, I'm just going to graph these points. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. So if you know what a parabola looks like, you can do it without a calculator, or you can just plug in numbers that are greater than 0, 1, 2, 3, and square each of those. Or you can just, again, plug it into your calculator, but then only graph the half that is greater than 0. So in this case, we are not continuous because we have a jump discontinuity here between 3 and 0 on the y-axis. All right, let's take a look at another one. So this time the break is at 3 rather than at 0 like it was for this first problem. So whatever number you're breaking at, you're going to want to think about how you're going to have two different functions on either side of that x value. So in this case, we're breaking at 3. So I'm going to be breaking my function here. Now, you're not actually going to draw a line. I'll erase this one later, but that'll help me think. So when x is less than 3, I'm going this way. When x is greater than 3, let's use this red color. That would be going this way. All right. Now, on this one, the two different functions that we're going to be graphing are a linear function, 7 minus 2x, and a constant function of 1. So I'm going to think about what each of them looks like for the entire graph and then only graph one piece of it. So if I think about the graph of y equals 7 minus 2x, for most of us, it's easier to visualize it as y equals negative 2x plus 7. So my slope is negative 2, my y-intercept is 7. So I can think about, okay, if I graph that, go up to 7, a slope of 2, so down 2 over 1, and it would look something like this. So I'm going to be drawing a line something like that, but only for values that are less than 3. So I'm going to think about where it would be at 3. So if I plugged in 3, 7 minus 2 times 3, 7 minus 6 would be 1. So when x is 3, over 3, up 1, and at this point I'm going to get rid of this line. Boop. So over 3, up 1, I will have an open circle because we don't actually hit 3. Um, and then I would be coming into that point with a slope of negative 2. Or going this way would have a slope of positive 2. So up 2 over 1, 2 over 1, 2 over 1. And if I do it right, I should hit right at 7, which makes sense. If I plugged in 0, 7 minus 0 is 7. So I should be at this point. Now for the red one, I'm thinking about the function y equals 1. Not y equals x, just y equals 1. And the graph of y equals 1 is what we call a constant function. It's always 1. So it's just a horizontal line. Now, I don't want to graph it everywhere. I only want to graph it when x is greater than or equal to 3. And now I'm going to end up coloring this circle in. Not for the green part, but for the red part. So when x is 3, y is 1. When x is 4, y is 1. When x is 5, y is 1. When x is 6, y is 1. And so on. We just get this horizontal line at y equals 1. So again, where we break, think about like a vertical line. You're not actually going to want to draw that, but that will help some of you guys visualize each piece of the piecewise function. All right, let's do one more together. Now, this one has three different pieces. So we're going to need to be using three different colors, and we're going to break at two different points. We're going to break at 0 and we're going to break at 3. So I need to kind of think about whoops, two different breaking points, one that's at 0 and one that's at 3. And again, I'm going to erase these later, but it'll help us visualize what's going on. And then I'm going to have three different functions for each different piece. So let's start with this top one in green. So for green, I want when x is less than or equal to 0. So here's 0 going to the left. So I've got the function y equals x squared. If I graph the whole function, it would look like this. But I only want going to the left of 0. I only want when x is less than or equal to 0. So this is the piece that I'm going to graph. Parabola starts at 0, 0. And because it's less than or equal to 0, I'm going to go ahead and color that dot in. And then either use my calculator to graph it or just think about it. So negative 1 squared is positive 1. 
Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. So you can either use your calculator or any number of other ways to graph this piece. My next piece I'll do in yellow. We've got y equals 4. So again, if you just have a number, that's a flat line, a horizontal line um, at whatever y value. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to be graphing this line. But I only want to graph it when x is between 0 and 3, so basically between these two black bars that I drew. So I'm going to go up to a height of 4 and go between 0 and 3. Now because my piecewise function is defined as 0 less than x less than 3, and neither of them is less than or equal to, these are both going to be open circles. And then let's go down to the last one. I'll do that one in a UT burnt orange. So the function that I'm thinking about for this one is y equals x minus 1. So if I think about the graph of x minus 1, slope is 1, y-intercept is negative 1. So I go down 1, draw a line that has a slope of 1. I don't want the whole line, though. I want to start when x is 3. So 1, 2, 3. I'm only looking for this piece of that line. So to figure out where it's going to start, I'm just going to plug in 3. When x is 3... 3 minus 1 is 2, so I have the point 3, 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and actually color this dot in because it's included as part of the domain for this one. And now my slope is 1, so I'm going up 1 over 1. Or you can look at your calculator once you've graphed x minus 1. Or you can just plug in some points. If I plug in 7, 7 minus 1 is 6. If I plug in 10, 10 minus 1 is 9, and so on. So on this piece, we end up with three different pieces. I have colored in dots for the orange and the green because of the bars on the orange and the green. I have open circles on the yellow because those don't have the bars underneath it. Now here's a cleaner version of all three of those. So you can hit pause and check yourself on those three. Um, and we're going to wrap up this first video here before we jump into writing equations, basically going the other way in the next video where I'll start with a graph and I'll work backwards and figure out what the equations would be. Hope this made sense. Feel free to rewatch it if you didn't. See you guys next week.